What's the worst house guest experience you've had? Story 1. I had surgery and was on bed rest for a week. I asked my cousin, who was living with me at the time, to keep an eye on me as I was on heavy painkillers. I stayed on the couch and let her use my bedroom. When I recovered, I found used hair weave piled up on clean towels in the bathroom cabinet, a shower nozzle behind my nightstand, trash piled all the way up the wall in the kitchen, dirty dishes everywhere, a plate of rancid food in the microwave, ketchup and mustard smeared on the floors, and she had stolen a bunch of clothing and CDs, along with one of my iPhone chargers, she had a Windows phone, and she poked a hole in my dollar $2,500 sleep number bed. I kicked her peach out immediately. Edit. Why I gave her the bed and took the couch. The couch was like two steps from the bathroom, and by giving her the bedroom, I thought I was ensuring that she would have no reason not to do this one simple task because she would have to pass by the couch to go to the kitchen or the bathroom. Edit. Explain shower nozzle. A shower is a feminine hygiene product that many women use to control vaginal odor. The bag contains the product, and the nozzle is inserted into the vagina. When you squeeze the bag, the product is pushed out of the nozzle, and it rinses the vagina. Edit. I have seen a handful of comments saying that you're supposed to shower your butt. Are you using actual douches or warm water enemas? Because douches typically contain vinegar, and that's unsafe for rectal use. Story 2. Ran into a guy I used to call a friend and let him stay with me for a while as he was down on his luck. I guess we'd ran out of toilet paper, so he used a washcloth and left it at the side of the toilet. Kicked him out and found out later he walked away with some of my CDs. Some mutual friends let him stay, against my advice. They came home one day to find him passed out on the couch with his pants around his ankles. After they kicked him out, they found out he'd racked up $900 in phone close relationship charges. Fudge, you know. You always were and always will be a piece of bad luck. Story 3. Never even got to spend any time in this apartment. I agreed to rent an apartment with my younger sister on her road to recovery from candy use, and we'd all thought she was doing well. I paid for the first month's rent and deposit, which is standard. She moved in a week early because I was working night shift and the whole process started on a Monday. That weekend, I got to move in. I found out my debit card was locked out because she stole it and attempted to withdraw money too many times. It didn't get any better after that, sadly. Story 4. Oh, this is a pretty good one. So I had a really old good friend call me and tell me they needed a place to stay for maybe a few days or a week when I lived in the Pacific Northwest. I, of course, said yes. Then she told me her girlfriend was coming too. Okay, great. They show up, and when they get to my porch, she tells me her girlfriend has strep throat. At first, I think, okay, whatever. But then I stop and think, isn't that highly contagious? But they are already here. So I just kind of start thinking to myself that ill have to somehow keep them to my spare bedroom and sterilize the nonsense out of everything. But then I'm just wondering why my friend didn't tell me in advance, or if they don't know how contagious it is. Like if my girlfriend had strep, I'd go get a hotel and not subject my friend to that. After about a day, my friend tells me via text she has to leave, which at first am relieved, but then she asks if her girlfriend can just stay at my place. I don't know her. I've never met her in my life. I tell her I have another couple that need to come stay with me, which was true, and that I'm not comfortable housing someone I don't know who is sick. She says that is fine. But then when she comes to get her stuff, she acts all ed and says, we'll see you sometime, maybe. And I don't hear from her for a long, long time after. Kind of messed up up she put me in that situation, TBH. Story 5. Well, this one happened a few years ago. But the husband of my great aunt came to visit us, mind you. He was like 80-something years old. So he goes to the bathroom to do his bussiness, and he comes down. Now he smells a little bit. But we all brush it aside then when he sits down, and after a while gets back up to leave. You can see bad luck stains on the sofa. Not only that, but my mom then goes upstairs and finds the bathroom full of bad luck. Not full-on bad luck, but a bunch of it was sprayed in the walls, etc. To this day, we haven't spoken about it, and that man passed away around a year ago. Story 6. My brother Todd is a candy addict and an alcoholic. Before mom and dad finally had enough and got a restraining order, they kept thinking that if they kept him at home, he'd get sober. He would wander the streets and bring home homeless people who were also strung out in the middle of the night. One time, it was this woman who used our bathroom, taking a shower and leaving an absolute mess, including her soiled thong on the bathroom floor. She also stole some stuff. We didn't know about her until the morning when she left my brother's room because despite being high as a kite, she was quiet. And for once, my brother, despite being high himself, remembered the alarm code, which was unusual because he normally forgets it when he's high drunk. Most of the time, we'd catch him bringing home strange women and men to sleep in his room because the alarm would go off and wake us all up. Every time, Dad would throw them both out and change the garage door code for the night so he couldn't get back in. Another time, one of my mom's now former friends came over in a rage, forcing her way in. She had been at urgent care and got tired of waiting. She had a bladder infection that was so bad she was bleeding. 
She left the bathroom a bloody mess and screamed at mom the entire time before finally leaving. Mom cut her out of her life after that. Story 7. He cranked my dad's speakers up to the max and blew them. They were from the 70s, so impossible to replace or repair. Then he clogged our toilet, grabbed a bunch of grandma's quilts to sop up the water. He then tried to stop the water by violently shacking the tank, cracking the bowl and dislodging it from its base. In a panic, he tried to bolt from the house. His wet feet slipped on the wood floor and he crashed into a wall, leaving a nice body-sized impression. That's how my brother's friends was barred from the house. Story 8. I was 23, just signed a lease for a duplex with my girlfriend. Got new furniture and a new computer. Then my brother shows up one with a broken foot and says he can't work, so he stays with me while. He acts grateful, and I had a spare bedroom that was using as an office. My new computer was in the room. He downloaded so much it crashed the hard drive. Had to wipe the hard drive and reinstall Windows. I put a parental block on the computer after that. He finally got a job and pretty much spent all his money on sweets. I would ask him to pitch in money for food bills and would be totally delusional saying he gave $500 last week. I think I got $100 from him in the six months he was there. He got messed up up on pills and passes out and ed himself on my brand new couch. Then tried to fight me when I yelled at him and said he had to pay for it to get cleaned. I told him to get out at that point, then it was a nightmare. He would send threatening messages to me saying how he was going to terminate me. Cops got called. Cops took some statements. Wrote down the text messages and didn't do nonsense at the time. Three months later, they arrest him and our mom calls me saying it's all my fault and I need to drop the charges. Needless to say, I'm not real close with my family these days. Oh yeah. I had a bed in the office that totally covered and pour out the water after he stayed there. Also found a duffel bag full of in the room and a few dozen little baggies with cola residue in them. Story 9. We had a house sitter once who wanted to bring their own dog for the week. They assured us the dog was well-behaved and house-trained. This was a pretty close friend, and their house is nice and clean so we believe them. Came home to find every rug in our house destroyed. The house smelled funky when we walked in, and I immediately found wet spots on our living room rug. Lifted it up and it had more stained areas than not. Same with the kitchen, hallway, bedroom, and guest room rugs. I'm guessing this dog didn't pee outside a single time it was there. This was someone we paid to watch our house. Edit to answer some common questions. Their house was all hardwood and had a dog door. I guess the dog just let itself out? Or maybe it does pee inside and they clean it up. Maybe the dog was freaked out in a new place? I honestly have no idea. I didn't confront them. We had a lot going on at that point in our lives and just felt it was best to silently sever the relationship and learn an expensive lesson. We were planning a cross-state move and a wedding. All out, small rugs went through the wash. The living room rug went right into the dumpster. It was so bad. We tried to clean the bit office rug, but it ended up trash too. We replaced the living room rug fairly cheaply. They tried to blame it on my dog and kind of acted like they hadn't noticed, which I do not for one second believe either part of. My dog has had two accidents since we got her six years ago. Once the first day, and once when she was recovering from anesthesia. She has a bladder of steel and weighs 15 pounds. This other dog was a solidly 75-pound lab mix. Based on the sizes of the stains, it was not the 15-pounder. Weirdly, there was no evidence of poop in the house. So I really don't know what was going on. No, it does not appear that they made any attempt to clean up the mess. The rug downstairs was literally dripping wet. We paid via Venmo before we got home. Yes, I'm a spineless wimp. No major justice boner to be found here. Story 10. I reconnected with a friend who was moving back to town. There was a live outdoor music event going on that evening and invited her over before my friends and I went to the event. She asked if I could pick her up. Once she was at my house, we were all having a few drinks. She disappears. I find her in the kitchen. She literally has everything out of my fridge and is cooking. When I say everything, I had just gone to the store and gotten fresh veggies, chicken breasts, ground beef. I was stocked up for a week or two. I ask her what she's doing and she tells me that she's been a chef at some fancy restaurant for a while and wants to cook dinner for everyone. At this point, WTF. But although I'm Ed, the food is already being cooked, so I might as well get a meal of it then deal with everything. Key a few moments later when she gashes her finger open with a knife. Blood everywhere, including all over the food on the stove. Once I get her finger wrapped up, she asks me, and I quote, Do you have a sewing kit? I'll fix this right up. No is the obvious answer to that. I notice that she has gotten some blood on her dress and mention that to her. She asks me to take her home so she can change before we leave. Immediate, yes. As I'm driving her across town, she calls her mom and chews the poor woman out, yelling at her to get a bucket of water and baking soda ready to soak the dress. We finally get to her house and she could sense what I was thinking. She asks if I'd wait for her to change and she'd only be a moment. The second she shuts the door to my truck, I pull off. She then jumps on my hood and starts screaming about two tall boy bud lights that she left at my house and that I'm a thief. I finally get her off the hood of the truck and simply tell her she's not invited. She destroyed all my food for over a week 
and I never wanted to talk with her again. Quick edit. The food she was cooking looked and smelled terrible. She was not a chef. She was not a good cook. I ended up cleaning up when I got home, and whatever she was making was going to be uneatable. Just a cross mix of chicken, beef, and every spice from my cupboard. Think 10-year kid unattended in the kitchen, making dinner. Story 11. I lived in a two-unit house, and we were the back unit that connected to a shared garage. Garage was used for nothing other than laundry and storage, and a previous tenant had left a mattress in it that no one ever bothered to move. One day, I, then 20F, go into the garage and nearly jump out of my skin upon seeing some man sleeping on the mattress. I bad person out and flee back to my unit just in time for two of my male housemates to come home. They go to confront the guy and come back to tell me that he was friends with our other male housemate and said housemate told him that he could crash in the garage as he was in between leases for a few days without bothering to inform the rest of us. Despite this banana move by my roommate, I offered to let the guy to sleep on my living room couch instead of some sketchy mattress in the crummy garage. A few days turned into a few weeks' months. I, the administrator of our utilities and rent payments, demanded that he chip in at this point. He agreed, but I was moving out soon because I finished a term early. The couch and Wi-Fi router were mine, and I was leaving them behind to pick up at the end of the year as a favor to my housemates. He shorted me a few hundred dollars, a large sum to a broke college kid, after I left. Another housemate ended up having to pay for this guest because I was about to go reclaim my couch and router if I didn't get my money. A year later, the guest had the audacity to text me to ask if he could take me out the next time I came into town. Yuck. Story 12. My GF was pregnant and we were taking a little vacation. We let two friends who are brothers use our house while we were gone on the condition that they maintained the yard and garden. First, they borrowed the truck, which wasn't a big deal, but they immediately wrecked it, driving head on into a garbage truck. Then our very best friend stopped by to borrow something and they told her to fudge off. They found some hidden cash, maybe $100, and stole it. They broke plates. We came home to find a pile of soaking wet towels and linens, which had grown mold, and they all had to be replaced. Believe it or not, they did make an attempt to mow the lawn, but somehow broke the lawnmower and then never fixed it or mowed or watered anything, and many flowers were dead. I had been collecting exotic varieties of heliconia there on the big island of Hawaii, and they were all dead. Some of those flowers were worth $80 or $100. So we come home from vacation, and the boys have vanished without a trace and won't ever ever answer our calls again. We are five months pregnant with no vehicle and a trashed house. I think the worst part was that we really did think of them as friends, but then they ghosted us like that, like we were disposable and our pregnancy and our lives didn't matter. Story 13. Cousin and her kid, 18, came to stay on our apartment, BC. The kid needed a psychiatrist evaluation and treatment. The city they lived in didn't have a facility for it, but ours did. She said they'll stay about three weeks. We said, yeah, anything to help. They ended up staying for more than four months, didn't put a single penny for groceries, took showers that lasted for ages, left the heat running, lights on on every room, just wasteful all around. In my family, we don't have dinner, just some tea and bread, but her and her kid needed to have dinner, so she would sometimes take the food I had set up for lunch for the next day and give it to her kid, who BTW had the appetite of a monster. So a lot of times I would rush in the morning to assemble the lunch packs and discover there was nothing left. If there wasn't any food ready, she would just take whatever she wanted from the fridge and prepare it. Fancy steak we were saving for the weekend? Gone. She even gave the kid half of my sister's birthday cheesecake before the party. Story 14. When our son was born, my mother-in-law came and stayed on our couch for two weeks to help. In the two weeks she was there, she did nothing to help. Dishes, laundry, feedings, nothing. And our poor son had real trouble feeding those first few months. We couldn't get him to eat well. And it didn't help that my MIL was there the whole time staring at us while the baby didn't eat. After two weeks, my father-in-law was going to join us, so my MIL baked a pie. For him. That's why I always said that if we had another one, I'd be on the doorstep with a shotgun until the baby was six months old. And hash X200B. Edit. As this has blown up some, I'll add a few things. When my MIL saw my wife for the first time after the baby, she said, Wow, it looks like there's another baby in there. Also, my feel wasn't there to meet his first grandchild because he had a prior commitment. It was a Vietnam veterans reunion. I wasn't bothered that he wanted to go to that because I know how important that group is to vets. But this is your only daughter and your first grandchild, and you can't skip it one year? But then again, if he'd been as helpful as his wife was, it was better that he was away. Story 15. Let my buddy live with me rent-free after I got him a job. Was trying to help him off the floor. When my brother had a traumatic brain injury and I had a week to decide if my brother was going to live or pass away. This is when my buddy started complaining that he had to breathe candy in the garage and not the house. Then he proceeded to go to work, 
where I also worked, and talk bad luck about me and my personal life to anyone who would listen. He did this while I was on medical leave to take care of my dying brother. Story 16. Friend came over and has a known foot odor problem. I've known this friend for more than 20 years. Every time he comes over, I tell him to take his boots off outside and leave them on the porch instead of taking them off inside and leaving them by the door. I just got a new deep freezer, the big chest kind with a flip-up lid, and he took his boots off and put them in my brand new empty. Apparently, he did this because he saw a post on Facebook about how foot odor is caused by bacteria and that if you freeze your shoes, it will terminate all the bacteria, thus eliminating your foot odor problem. I opened my freezer and nearly passed away from the smell. Best part was, he took his boots out, and for about three minutes, they didn't smell that bad anymore, so he was ecstatic, but not for long. As everyone knows, you pour a cold drink, and within minutes, you have condensation running down the side of your glass. Well, his boots were super cold, and after about three or four minutes, water vapor started condensing all ail over his boots. They were soaking wet inside and out and stunk even worse. He ended up throwing them away that day. Story 17. My now ex-BFS friend took over our bedroom. I came home from work to find him on our bed with his dirty socks on our pillows as he was on his computer. Would constantly sit in between my BF and I. Would eat on the couch or in our bed and leave crumbs. If I attempted to talk to my BF, he would immediately interrupt me to say something. If we went to go out for anything, he would invite himself along and take shotgun, whether I was driving or BF was driving would leave trash all over our car. The kicker, though, bringing his girlfriend around, who we found out later, was a minor. He was 19, she was 15, not flipping cool. I sometimes think the best part of the breakup was not dealing with him anymore. Story 18. We were having a family BBQ, and this gong show of a woman, Joni, shows up. She's the alcoholic GF of a guy my dad and uncle worked with and were friends with. We already knew she had a knack for ruining a good time and being a party pooper, so we decided to tell her we were all getting ready to leave and go to my grandparents. She says she needs to use the restroom, so we wait, and then pile into my mom's van and drive down the street and circle back. We arrive back, and my Uncle Kelly goes to use the restroom and immediately comes out and says, What the fudge, man? She had pooped everywhere, smeared it everywhere, and then put her filthy panties in the sink and rolled out like it was nothing. We didn't see her for a few years and then ran into her at Canada Trust, and in the quay at the bank, loudly apologized for ting all over our restroom. We never saw her again. Story 19. My parents hosted a guy from another state who played on the same sports team as my brother for a year. But the dude was the same age as me. He basically stayed in his room the whole time he wasn't at school or practice for the sport. And the door was always close to the point where he wouldn't let anyone in to clean, even vacuuming, the entire year. An important point. This dude had allergies or something. We didn't have pets or even use scented candles that would cause allergies. To the point where he was always sniffing and then hawking loogies. My family thought he was using tissues for that while in his room. Nope. Giant flipping loogie pile among other fluids all over the carpet and walls. The room had to be professionally cleaned after he left because of how gross it was. Early in the year he was over, a picture of myself and a friend was missing from my room. I thought the friend had taken it last time she was over because it was a cute picture of us. It was also found in a drawer in the room, also covered in those same other fluids. It grosses me out to even think about it. Story 20. Aunt going through a divorce after she'd been cheating on her husband for years. She comes to stay at her sister's place, aka my mom, while coping. This psycho bad person drank nearly every drop of liquor we had, left the fridge open and ruined a month's worth of groceries, fell down our stairs, and left a massive dent in the wall, and to cap it off, got in her car while drunk. It was like 3 a.m. and we were all asleep. Pulled out before we could stop her, hit my car, and sped off. My mom begged us to not call the police. Yeah, no, I flipped on that drunk bad person immediately. Story 21, I had a friend who needed help stay with me. He was going to pay rent while he looked for a place of his own. It was supposed to be a temporary arrangement. I had to kick him out after just over a month. I charged him less than half of the rent, and he was responsible for his own food. I would take care of utilities. Well, in that five-week span, he had destroyed his room, stained the carpet, scuff marks on the walls, cane burns, when he wasn't supposed to breathe inside. I found his bad luck everywhere, like a pile of coins under the couch from shops. I didn't go into his room for the first four weeks, but then this foul smell started coming from there. Oh my god. I wish I had a camera at the time to take a picture. I cleaned out three bags of just garbage. Coffee cups, cane butts, and just trash that was piled up on the floor. You couldn't even see the carpet. The worst was the food. I had four packs of bread in the freezer, which would have lasted me about three months. He ate two of them in a week. Just shoved bread into his mouth like potato chips. Just plain bread. It was gross. When I asked him to leave, I swore I would never let anyone stay with me for more than a few days. Story 22. 
had a friend from college over for the weekend as he was visiting the area. On Sunday night when he was supposed to drive back to his place, he had one too many drinks before leaving. This was in the middle of a brutally cold winter mind. You and the roads in our area were already terrible to drive at the moment due to weather. So not wanting him to drive intoxicated, I offered to let him crash for another night. I also pointed out the roads might be better in the AM too. He thought about it and agreed. So after another round or two in a bowl, we both headed off to our beds around 10.30. At 1 a.m., I wake up to my house's heat on full blast, like drenched in sweat under my blankets hot. I get up to turn the temp down, wondering what the hell's going on and notice my front door just sitting open. Porch and hall light on as if advertising it to the world or anyone who may drive by. He's gone, and so is the rest of my beer bud. Calls went straight to voicemail. Saw him once or twice after that, and he acted as if nothing had happened. Maybe he blacked out and doesn't remember? But regardless, never again. Story 23. We throw pretty mild parties. A good amount of drinking is involved, but it's still a family-friendly event. One year, a friend brought a new boyfriend. Brand new. IIRC. The party was one of the first times they had ever met each other in person. We never before had an issue with friends of friends invites and even met a few awesome new people that way. But this guy earned the distinction of the only lifetime ban from our house that we've ever had to institute. Within the first half hour of the party, new boyfriend disappears alone into a storage room. Like, he opened the door to a closet, went in by himself, and closed the door. That was weird to begin with, but only a couple people saw it happen at the time. After emerging, for the rest of the night, he was totally out of his flipping gourd on ecstasy or something else he brought with him. Things just progressively escalated with a number of incidents, but mostly wasted guy-type behavior. No idea we were headed for infamous dog rapist territory. Toward the end, with the party quieting down and maybe a dozen people left hanging out, he seemed to have just passed out. He was laying alone in a room completely motionless. We had never had to ask anyone to leave before, and we were hoping that our friend would take care of him. But given that he wasn't bothering anyone anymore, we just breathed a sigh of relief and ignored him. Keep in mind, no one else was blackout pass out drunk, and this is a milk toast party with people's parents and families around. So the remaining guests were all chilling playing a game, and suddenly this guy stirs. He literally crawls into the room on the floor, not even hands and knees, but like flipping, dragging himself, just moaning and yelling unintelligibly. The crowd is just watching in disbelief. Our dog is there, already weirded the fudge out by this guy earlier in the night, and now really distressed. Then he starts crawling toward the dog and saying, Dog's name! Do you want to fudge me? Not just once. Over and over, dog's name. Come on, fudge me. I want to fudge you. And starting to try to pet her. In front of everyone at a Gato No family party. It was one of the weirdest, most rage-inducing, and most uncomfortable moments of my life. Of course, that's when he got kicked out and earned a lifetime ban for reasons I never even flipping imagined. No longer talk to the friend who brought him either. Story 24. So my paternal aunt came to visit my father who was in hospital. She dropped off the bus with her husband, went to see him for an hour, then crashed at our home for a week and never went to see him again. Both of them, she and her husband, won't do anything to help me or my mom. My mom had to take care of everything. Prepare food for them, then go visit my father, come back and cook again for them. Those bastards took over our living room and would spend all day watching television without interacting with others, leaving lights, fans on, doors open everywhere they go. Her husband used every item in bathroom and polluted everything, soap, razor, trimmer, and even used my toothbrush. Not joking. After a week of free vacation, they demanded I drop them off at bus station. I was very sick myself at that time and we didn't own a car, so I had to drop them off one by one at the station on my bike. I had 104 degree Fahrenheit fever from stomach infection, and that day was a hell for me. If I owned a car back then, I definitely would have to drop them off at their home 160 kilometers away, for free. Story 25. In my case, I was a house guest and the hosts were the worst. I stayed in a home with three other girls while we did work for the church. While it was very generous of the host family to have us, they sold Amway and so we had to sit through a sales pitch one night. We slept in the basement on the floor, which was carpeted, but infested with fleas from their numerous dogs. One night for entertainment, we made balls of dog hair and watched to see how many fleas hopped on it. When they were finished cooking a meal, they left any leftovers in the pan until the next meal, and then they just heated them up. So last night's burger had been sitting on the stove for 24 hours, reheated and served again. Is that even a thing? Story 26. I was seven months pregnant with my second child. We hit a period of severe financial hardship, like eating buttered noodles every meal because that was all we could afford. I made sure my daughter ate properly, but I didn't. I saved for two months, seriously, and bought myself a $7 steak because I was seriously craving meat. 
I came home after work to cook that steak up, and my friend, who we let stay there for a week because she had nowhere to go, was eating it. She knew how poor we were. Her excuse? It is inhumane to make a grown adult eat nothing but buttered noodles. I grabbed her clothes, threw them outside, and told her to leave. Story 27. Woman I met on match drove from SC to OH to stay at my place for Labor Day weekend. She seemed normal until every time she took a bad luck, which was twice a day, she used an entire roll of toilet paper. And let me be clear, she did not use a lot of toilet paper. She used all the toilet paper I had. The first night, she just stared at me and stared and repeatedly said things like, God, you're gorgeous. I am average looking and telling me all the things she wanted to do to me. Finally, just to shut her up, I initiated close relationship. As I was about to put it in, she looks me dead in the eyes and says in a demon's gravelly voice, If you put anything in my unpleasant person, I will literally terminate you. We did not have close relationship. She then asked me to give her advanced warning of when I'd be going to bed. Why? I asked her. This is when she revealed that she is bipolar and would literally never sleep if she didn't take her meds an hour before bedtime. It didn't matter. I woke up alone and hopeful that she had left. Nope. Turns out she, in her own words, stood naked in front of the living room window all night, sobbing. I live on a second floor apartment in front of a sidewalk. You're welcome, neighbors. The second day was me trying to avoid her in my own apartment and posting updates to Facebook during her two hour long S and post bad luck wipings. I'm okay, still alive, was one such post. I asked her to leave that afternoon and she did. But when she got back to SC, she sent me an email asking if we didn't have close relationship all weekend because I'm boy. I assured her that I'm as straight as the day is long but that I don't usually prefer close relationship under the duress of physical threats, and that after realizing how much toilet paper she used, that no one would ever want to go near her unpleasant person anyway. Her final email reply said she respected my being brutally honest with her. Story 28. My brother was the awful house guest once. We had our son, four, and daughter, nine months. He stayed in our daughter's room because she was still in her crib. Apparently, she woke up one night and he gave her a bottle so she would not wake us up. He filled her baby bottle with beer and put her to bed with it. We did not give her bottles in bed. We also did not give her beer. When she vomited, he didn't clean her up. He just turned the crib around so we would not see the vomit. But he left her in her vomit to sleep. She woke up screaming, which is when I learned all of this. He got to leave because WTF? Who fills a baby bottle with beer and gives it to the baby? Story 29. My buddy got hooked on heroin. The dope house he bought at was up the street from my apartment. One day he stops by, asks to use my bathroom and hang out a few. Not unusual, before this we had hung out a lot. He was always welcome at my place. He goes to the bathroom, and after a while I hear some grunting and groaning noises. Then I hear a loud crash. I yelled to see if he was okay and didn't get a response, so I went to check. When I went toward the bathroom, saw the door was open. I glanced in, and he's leaned up against the wall, sweating and moaning like a zombie with all his paraphernalia spread out across my sink. I kicked him out because I'm not an enabler. He gathered his bad luck and left. When I went back in... I noticed that there was blood splatter all over my bathroom. Having to clean that up while realizing that our friendship was currently just a convenient place for him to do sweets made for an extremely poor day. Edit. A lot of you are hateful. This guy was is my friend, and I really don't want to see him pass away. I want him to get help and get better. Story 30. Had a college friend and her husband stay with us after my husband and I got married? Like, literally the day after we got married. She asked when she got the invite if it would be okay to stay with us since it would be tough for them to come otherwise. I wanted her to be at the wedding and we had stayed with them a few times when we were visiting back east, so felt like we kind of owed it to them. My husband had to work a couple days the week after anyways, new job at new company. So figured, what the hell? They stayed with us for three days and it felt like a month. They complained about everything, how expensive everything was. We live in CA, they live in rural PA, the traffic, how small our house was, the food. We let them borrow our car for day trips and they complained about how outdated it was. Went out to eat with them a couple times and treated the servers like bad luck. Expected us to pay for everything because they were our guests. Straw that broke the camel's back was when they had a 6 a.m. flight back to PA and didn't want to spend the dollar forty for an Uber ride to the airport. So they asked me if I wouldn't mind taking them to the airport at 3.30 in the morning. Said fudge it because I wanted them out and I knew I would never see them again after that. Lesson learned. Story 31. Used to be friends with a dude named Dave. He was like a modern-day hobo troubadour. He'd go home do some odd jobs to save up enough money for a plane ticket, and then spend as long as he could on the road playing music in the streets for pocket money and crashing on couches, camping in the woods, until he was absolutely out of money, at which point he'd find a way to get back home. He was literally able to see the world doing this. 
In reality, though, he'd usually just end up staying somewhere until he was no longer welcome. I met him through a few friends, and every time he'd roll into town, we'd hang out. But I always made it clear that my couch was not one on which he could crash. Anyway, one time he showed up, I knew he had been in town for a couple of weeks. The weather was cold and rainy, and he had nowhere to go, so I told him he could stay, but just for a couple of days. He ended up staying for like two weeks, making a mess, eating my food, and not contributing anything. At any rate, one night I let him know that this needed to be the last night, and that he needed to make some phone calls or do whatever he needed to do to find somewhere else to stay. He was totally cool about it. We stayed up almost all night, having drinks and talking about where he was going to go next, and I almost forgot about the fact that he has been a constant annoyance annoyance for the past two weeks. As I was going to bed, he told me he would be gone in the morning when I got up. When I got up the next day, he was gone, and so was all of my candy. Story 32. My brother is a vagabond. He shows up at my house without calling ahead all the time. He unpacks his stuff, which stinks. He stinks. He's A, and he is always by a campfire and doesn't shower. He makes my whole house smell. He also will either bring some puppies he got that definitely haven't had their shots, or he will bring a good friend. He just met that looks shady as can be. He is always here to borrow money, raid my fridge for booze, and can't afford dinner. This is all under the guise of, I just want to surprise you. In reality, he knows if he calls ahead, I'll say no. Story 33. My stepdaughter and her boyfriend and two pit bulls showed up for Thanksgiving out of their minds on meth and would not leave, stole some stuff, and hawked to buy meth. The pit bulls terminated my wife's cats and refused to leave. I found a wallet with a stranger's ID, went to the guy's house approx 10 miles away. He said it had been stolen along with other stuff in a burg. He then called the officer that filled out the report. I lead the officer back to my house and introduced him to my stepdaughter and her boyfriend. The police found some pawn tickets and took the couple in for questioning. We threw their stuff out in the driveway and called Pitbull Rescue for the dogs. Story 34. This is super mild, but I was a kid, and it really edged me off. So my mom's cousin. Her husband and son came from India to come see all the family. I think they spent about a week with us before moving on to their next stop. The son was about my age at the time. I reckon about eight-ish. But he was a little bad luck. Years later, my dad told me he wanted to throttle him a few times. Me, trying to be polite, after a talking from my dad about how we treat guests, was doing my best to get along with him and playing on the PS1, maybe two, with him when he says he needs to go to the toilet. So I pause and wait. After about five mines, I'm thinking, okay, maybe he's gone for a bad luck. After 10 mins, I'm thinking, oh no, this kid can bad luck. After 15 mins, I'm told to go see if he's okay. I walk up the stairs and see the bathroom doors wide open. So I call his name and his response comes from my room. I dart in and this fool has got every Lego airplane, car, truck, and transformer makeup from my Lego airbase that I must have spent at least six weeks building, in one hand, with them all stacked together. As I open the door and see him, he pauses, looks me dead in the eye, and crashes the all the models into the ground, destroying all my hard work. Many people would probably say I should let this go with it just being about Lagos, but no. Fudge that little illegitimate child. Story 35. My sister is a card. No one in my family makes the best decisions, I admit. But my sister would easily win the yearly family award for bad luck decisions. She asked if she could come up to Iowa from Texas for a few weeks, a month at most. I live with my mother, you see. Both of our parents needed someone to live with them. Dad had pretty advanced cancer before he went into night. Mom's got onset of dementia. I pleaded with my mom that if my sister asked to stay, we would firmly decline. Big surprise, she didn't bother to outright ask or make plans. She just asked my mom how would she feel about her showing up for a bit. Four days later, surprise! She lives here now along with her five-year-old son. We now have four people in a two-bedroom house. She takes over my mother's room and displaces her into a back room with no heating in the dead of winter. She refuses to pay a single bill or lift a finger for chores. She applied for food stamps, put all of our names on it without our permission, then throws a huge bad person fit if we ask for her to use it for anyone but herself. She gets her meds at the start of the month. Painkillers. Which just so happens to be the only time she has narcolepsy until she runs out of them. At which point she demands rides to the hospital to scam them for more sweets. Tip of the iceberg so far, TBH. I catch her stealing jewelry. She's barely taking care of her son, my nephew. And she treats our mother like dog bad luck because of a all my problems are your fault mentality that just nonsense. This went on for 18 months where I had enough. Got the cops involved. Had her bad luck put on the curb so she couldn't take what wasn't hers. Handed her $500 for the trip back south and told her to GTFO and never return. Story 36. Poop rag. Lived in a one-bedroom, one-bath with my then-boyfriend. 
he begged to let his best friend stay with us while he gets in his feet, moving from several states away. X explained he had some interpersonal issues like anxiety and told me how he was a bit traumatized from an involuntary stay at a mental health ward as a teen, but was otherwise harmless. He was a lump and did nothing for a couple months, and I don't know why I let him stay after learning about his special rag. A few days after he's living there, I ask my BF what's up with the rag draped on the side of the tub, because it looks and smells gross. He goes beet red and storms out. Lots of yelling by my BF of, you flipping promised this wasn't going to be an issue again type talk. He has a single rag he used to wipe his butt after pooping. He didn't want more than that single disgusting rag, and he cleaned it by running hot water through it and wringing it out to dry. No soap because those unneeded chemicals could damage his precious. Remembering the smell did make me vomit when my ex explained all this to me. I don't know what they worked out after that. I never saw the rag again and I didn't ask, yes I was scared of the answer. As disgusting as that was, it wasn't evil or dangerous and I don't even want to know the real why if it... The last straw came after months of him doing nothing but playing our gaming systems. He used my game pre-order codes, back when they gave you stuff for that, while I was at work. Sounds petty, but we were both done at that point. And I'm still ed about it, as I was never able to get that gear from my favorite franchise at the time. His hygiene smell was the worst, and he didn't cook, clean, or pay towards anything. Story 37. I had a friend from college who used to invite herself to visit 1-2x a year. It got to the point where I would dread these visits because my friend would complain about everything. When you move again, can you find an apartment with a sink with only one handle? This current setup sucks. And brag about money. Plus, we had somewhat grown apart at this point, so the visits were sometimes awkward. I was starting to feel like I was being used as a hotel since I live in Chicago. On her most recent and last visit, I firmly told her she had to get a hotel room. I had moved into a 400-square-foot studio and did not even have a couch for her to sleep on. We were 29 at the time. I am an assistant, and she is a pharmacist. We were out for drinks, and she said, I just think it's so wild how I live in this huge, new, beautiful home, and you basically live in a tiny room. PSA, for the love of God, never invite yourself to stay with people be it friends or family. Let them invite you. You might think you are welcome, but it is entirely possible that your host is just being polite and feels like she, he cannot say no. I recently reached out to this friend to wish her a happy birthday and her response was, thank you. Let's plan a visit soon. Story 38. A friend from childhood, Amy, lived across the street from us, asked to come visit with her new BFJ and daughter, Ruby, I had not met yet. They live in the south of my state about five hours away. They unload a bunch of dirty clothes and sticky toys and it's strewn from hell to breakfast. Their daughter runs amok, touching everything, terrorizing the cat and screaming when she is told no. Their little girl screamed and had so many fits, and they would rush to give her whatever she wanted so she'd stop. They also left her with me without asking me or telling me. I would find out when Ruby kept screaming and Amy wasn't rushing in to give her what she's screaming for to stop her tantrum. Or I'd wake up to Ruby screaming next to my bed because they left before I even got up. One day they went to the lake and left her, and they wouldn't answer my calls. When they get back, Amy is surprised at my anger and frustration. You've raised two of your own. What's the big deal? It's like riding a bike. I'd listen to Ruby scream all day and have tantrums because I didn't rush to let her have her way. I took her to the park. No, you can't push kids off the play equipment. No, you can't throw sand at people. And to the water toys. No, you can't hit the other kids. Yes, you have to take turns. And then to the McDonald's Playland. No, you cannot hit or push other kids. No, you cannot grab food off other people's tables. I never bribed my own kids and super hated having to with Ruby. Nothing helped. She offers to help with cleaning. Wow, how awesome of you to help me clean up after you, your BF and your holy terror. She broke so many dishes, helping, broke the vacuum, left diaper footballs everywhere, even the garden, front yard and driveway, dirty clothes everywhere, food containers left everywhere, and bags of dollar store nonsense bags of odds and ends from various stores, so many bags. Her offer of help cleaning were always short-lived and usually just made more work. They then started asking me to buy things on my trips to the store, diapers, snacks, beer, etc. After a couple weeks, I was intellectually and physically exhausted and asked what the plan was because I was running on fumes. Oh, we'll get a hotel, no worries. Nothing said for another few days, I ask again. They don't have the money to get a hotel. Mind you, they were both on unemployment and between them had $900 slash week. I can be very blunt, but am mostly tactful and diplomatic. When I'm very stressed or my emotions are high, I am not so tactful. Luckily, she has known me, and I her, most of our lives, so she didn't get as offended as her BF. I told her if they have $900 a week and can't afford a hotel, then they shouldn't be shopping and eating out when I've been as gracious as I can be, but I'm burnt out, and they need to have their own space, hotel, Airbnb, whatever. 
It took calling her parents, explaining the situation, apologizing profusely for calling as I know her daughter is a grown woman, but I was at the end of my sanity. Her mom got them a hotel and they left. They stayed five weeks total. They left, but didn't bother to clean up anything or even offer. They left their bedding piled on the floor, just rancid and dirty, and all the packaging and trash from their purchases everywhere. At the end, I had to throw out blankets, a couple pillows, some Tupperware containers they'd left food in, and tucked away under furniture and in piles of laundry, and a pan she had scorched something plastic in it. I had to have the plumber come to unclog my toilets. Pulled out toys and very large wad of shop towels, WTF. I called a handyman to come put the screen door back on because they had managed to break it off the frame, but never did have a definite answer as to how and also to repair some holes in the wall that were most likely from their daughter, throwing toys when having tantrums. It took me over a week to get everything back to normal. Her BF made a point of telling me I was a poor host as they were leaving. Whatever, man, keep walking. Story 39. My time to shine. My cousin was staying at my house about six years ago when I was 22. She was probably 30. We already didn't get along, but she has a good relationship with my dad, so he let her stay despite my objections. The problem was him and my mom had to leave to a town two hours away because of an emergency. I go out that night with some friends. I return home with some Whataburger. Gonna eat and then sleep. When I come home, my cousin is clearly messed up up. I knew she had alcohol problems, but this was more than that. She looked out of her mind. I tell her that I need something from the guest room where she was staying. As aroused to look at what she had been taking, she says I'm not allowed in the room. I tell her she's in my house and I don't need her consent to look in the room. She then starts hitting me when I try to open the door. I push her away from me and call my parents. She's screaming bloody murder and hitting and kicking me. I know if I touch her, she'll say I assaulted her and I'm going to jail. I managed to lock myself in my room, then I hear it. She's grabbed a knife and she's stabbing the door like we're in The Shining and she wants to, here's Johnny, me. My dad calls her mom who is eventually able to come over and drag her out of the house and into a car. Turns out she had popped about five different pills in addition to getting hammered. Had to go to the hospital because she kicked me in my nuts and I was worried about the swelling. She's not allowed at my house anymore. Story 40. When I was a kid, one of my friends had to come live with us for a few months. Friend was probably 14, I was a little younger. The friend spent the whole time sitting on our recliner loudly watching YouTube with headphones but interacting with the YouTubers out loud and scream giggling and ignoring everyone in the house unless it was to death glare them and shriek like an actual banshee. Accompanying mom sat around drinking beer all the time and was permissive because she was also scared of setting off her demon spawn. For some reason I stayed friends with this person for five more years. Did they ever change you ask? No, no they did not. Story 41. I had a very swole, extremely intimidating, and hostile roommate one year. I'm a very non-confrontational introvert, so it was inherently stressful, but I made it through the year, laying low as much as I could. On move out, he steals my nice bike, which he knew was something I used daily and took care of. I wasn't 100% sure it was him. Maybe it just disappeared the exact day he moved out. But then the same day, he blocked me on anything I could contact. Felt like his last way of being an unpleasant person and picking on me. Fudge him. 